Oh no. Oh, we got tricked. Article one of the Maori text grants governance rights to the crown while the English text cedes all rights and powers of sovereignty to the crown. Bro, there's no other way to say it. The British took advantage. Oh, dudes and dudettes, welcome back to the channel, man. Sincerely appreciate you being here with me on today. As to my just now, today I'm going to increase my knowledge. The video we're watching is Why Are Maori Rising Up Against the New Zealand Government? Let's dive in. It's the starting of a revolution for Maori. And the more you try and put us in a struggle, the more we'll get up and fight, brother. Look me in the eye, I'll look you in the eye and just tell me if that's what you want for our people. Bah! What if I were to go to Belgium, Holland, and force you to take on my culture, take on my language? There are people in control, but you have to learn that yourself who these people are. We were heading to investigate the Māori King's national hui in Ngārawa here. It had been called in response to new policies by the New Zealand government led by Winston Peters, David Seymour, and Prime Minister Chris Luxon. So these three are the, these are the ones that are causing all the trouble, I assume? Change all the woke virtue signaling names of every government department back to English. Parliament will start to virtue signal David Seymour and Prime Minister Chris Luxon. We will change all the woke virtue signaling names of every government department back to English. Parliament will start to debate what the principles of the treaty really mean. The main controversy is around the Treaty of Waitangi, New Zealand's founding document signed in 1840 by Maori chiefs and the British Crown. The Treaty of Waitangi. All these treaties mean nothing. This is what I'm coming to figure out. It's sacrosanct. We want the opportunity to be walking side by side. Why do we have to fight for the opportunity to walk side by side when y'all came here, bruh? This is insane. Y'all gonna come to our land and tell us how to run things on our land? I don't think so. I don't think so, because you wouldn't want that happening to you, would you? I don't think so, especially with the the ferocity that has been suppressed over this time. You, bruh, oh my goodness, I see, oh man, I can't get, oh man. Pretty close. Who are you? Do you know who I am? Tommy Hitsy? Stan's uncle. Okay, I am day fine. What is the new government? Was I right or was I wrong? I feel horrible if I'm wrong. My deepest apologies. But I thought I recognized him. Doing. <laughs> okay, I am day fine. What is the new government doing? <laughs> What they shouldn't be doing. <laughs> you know, it's the start of a revolution for Maori. And the more you try and put us in a struggle, the more we'll get up and fight, brother. What would you say to Christopher Luxon if he was here today? Go to Australia. I would swear, but no, no swearing on the channel, bro. The last time I heard that fellow on TV could feed a family for $60. He needs to maybe have a, another sleep, another moi, and just rethink about it. Bro. I feel sorry for you because you're just a prospect. Look me in the eye, I'll look you in the eye and just tell me if that's what you want for our people, then we'll give you the same, you know, language which you want back, my bro. Their policy undermined the territory. You know, they just need to wake up to that and uh, get over it. If we take that away from them, then Maori people will have nothing. Well, the only ones that can do anything with it are the Uri or the heirs and successors of those two people who signed it. Because it's one race dominating another and taking all that that race had to have in the first place, taking my everything from me. We just go for our um, room at the moment on our scooters. We run these to like, um, cut through all the traffic. The mob's speeding when you know how to talk Nauru. No, no one no. else knows what you're saying. Yeah, no one Māori. This is exactly why right here, 
that Ale gotta be strong within the community. This right here, and I'm sure this is already known, but I just I'm just reacting to what I see in the moment. Bro, there has to be a core set of people that are willing to, for lack of better terms, die on that hill to keep this culture going, bro. And I feel like Stan has just picked up that that baton, that mantle, and is now leading that fight. And I'm all the way over here in Florida, seeing what's happening, hearing about the struggles, seeing how similar it is to blacks and what we've gone through and realizing that the only right thing is to fight but there are different ways to fight and different times to fight different ways and the way to fight in this very moment from the very 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 little that I have come to understand is that even though we're trying to be pressed down like this, the government and the Maori people, as long as this stays strong, this can go wherever it needs to. The rise up will come. The boil, the boil up will come. It will overflow. There will be a time where the uprising is necessary. I feel in this moment, it's more important to just stay intact culturally but they, they said that they're wiping out and that they're pushing people away into the jungle and not allowing speech oh man oh man oh goodness the language itself was almost um, extinct there was only a few that knew it our grandparents um, were, were beaten Extinct. There was only a few that knew it. Our grandparents um, were, were beaten for speaking the language. And at school, they were told that the white man's way was the way to go. What are you holding there? This one belonged to uh, Te Whakaawi. Yeah. And this one was Potato Te Filofilos. Yeah, pretty lucky. Yeah, Our friend is taking us over to his teacher. He said he's got some good stories. All right then. Ah, waka kona hoki ki ya ho. Sound good. What do you think people don't understand about your people? They just don't care. You know, you've got to remember that Pakia, they come from a different uh, perspective, a different lifestyle. So, you know, they're only believing what they believe, and that's not their fault either. It doesn't matter we are connected to anything. I mean, that's true. That's true, but there are some that see and really see. There are some. If you can connect it to China or connect it, be yourself. We just gotta be respectful of each other. The hui ended, but tension between Maori and the government kept rising. One day a tiny fire went swimming in the moana. Not blaming everybody else. You see that? I love debate. Come to Waitangi. I will see you there. Tēnā koutou katoa. It was Waitangi weekend, so we headed to Takapuna Beach to see what the government supporters were saying. What are you up to this afternoon? Uh, we've been out fishing this morning, so we've just come back in. I just got married today. Wife's family. They came over from Korea. Do you have any opinions on Waitangi? Yeah, I think it's all a bit over the top. Lost the plot. Over the top in what way? far as uh, the way things are going in the country. I'm not too sure, not too educated on that to be honest. I wish I knew more about it. Go to a marae or be welcomed by one of the local marais. Mm -hmm. Well Changi Day is really about reflecting yourself I think isn't it? Marys included as to what they're doing it's and what Zealand we're doing. Yes. It's a New Zealand day. Do you think your opinion is not common around here? I suspect not. <laughs> Do you think we need to get rid of the treaty or rewrite the treaty? Uh, I don't think rewrite, but get rid of it. It's only creating more division. We would be better to rewrite things and start again. How would you rewrite it? Let's see here. 
Dungi Treaty. All right, now this is only Wikipedia. The Treaty of White Dungi, sometimes referred to as Detiriti, is a document of central importance to the history of New Zealand, its constitution, and its national mythos. It has played a major role in the treatment of Maori people in New Zealand by successive governments and wider populations, something that has been especially prominent from the late 20th century. The treaty document is an agreement, not a treaty as recognized in international law. It has no independent legal status, being legally effective only to the extent it is recognized in various statutes. It was first signed on February 6, 1840 by Captain William Hobson for the British Crown and by Maori Chiefs Nangatira from the North Island of New Zealand. The treaty was written at a time when the New Zealand Company, acting on behalf of a large number of numbers of settlers and would-be settlers, were establishing a colony on New Zealand. And when some Maori leaders had petitioned the British for protection against French ambitions, it was drafted with the intention of establishing a British governor of New Zealand, recognizing Maori ownership of their lands, forests, and other possessions, and giving Maori the rights of British subjects. Okay, so they'll have British rights. Okay. It was intended by the British Crown to ensure that when Lieutenant Governor Hobson subsequently made the Declaration of British Sovereignty over New Zealand in May 1840, the Maori people would not feel that their rights had been ignored. Once they had been written and translated, it was first signed by Northern Maori leaders at Waitangi. Copies were subsequently taken around New Zealand, and over the following months, many other chiefs signed. Around 530 to 540 Maori, at least 13 of them women, signed the Maori language version of the Treaty of Watangi, despite some Maori leaders cautioning against it. Only 39 signed the English ver version. An immediate result of the treaty was that Queen Victoria's government gained the sole right to purchase land. In total, there are nine signed copies of the Treaty of Waitangi, including the sheet signed on February 6, 1840 at Waitangi. The Treaty of the Text includes a preamble and three articles. It is bilingual with the Maori text translated in the context of the time from the English. Article 1 of the Maori text grants governance rights to the crown, while the English text cedes all rights and powers of sovereignty to the crown. Oh no, oh, we got tricked. Article one of the Maori text grants governance rights to the crown while the English text cedes all rights and powers of sovereignty to the crown. So it was essentially like s signing a, a slave sheet, all rights and powers of sovereignty to the crown. Oh no. Article two of the Maori text establishes that Maori will retain full chieftainship over their lands, villages, and all their treasures, while the English text establishes the continued ownership of the Maori over their lands and establishes the exclusive right of preemption of the crown. What does that mean? The purchase of goods or shares by one person or party before the opportunity is offered to the others. Article two of the Maori text establishes that Maori will retain full chieftainship over their lands, villages, and all their treasures. Okay, so the Maori text said that Maori can keep everything, while the English text said, the continued ownership of Maori over their lands and establishes the right of preemption of the crown. Exclusive right of pre preemption. 
preemption of the crown. Oh, so anything that happens, the crown gets it first? Is that what I'm to understand? Article 3 gives Maori people full rights and protections as British subjects. As some words in the English treaty did not translate directly into the written Maori language of the time, the Maori text is not an exact translation of the English text, particularly in relation to the meaning of having and ceding sovereignty. Oh, crap. Oh, oh, the back door. Oh, no. Oh, man. In the Maori text of Article 1, Maori gave the British Kawanatanga the right of governance, whereas in the English text, Maori ceded sovereignty. Well, Maori gave up sovereignty. One of the problems that faced the original drafters of the Te Reo Māori text of the treaty was that sovereignty had no direct equivalent in the context of Māori society. Rangatira chiefs exercised full authority, mana, over the land and resources on behalf of the wider community. The term, is used, the term used in the Te Reo Māori text, Kawanatanga, was a transliteration of the word governance, which was then in current use. Governance is the action or manner of governing. Okay. Maori understanding of this word came from familiar use in the New Testament of the Bible when referring to the likes of Pontius Pilate and from their knowledge of the role of the governor of New South Wales, whom they refer to as Kawana, which means governor. Okay. So this is just a case of not being bro. there's no other way to say it. The British took advantage in the fact that there was no transliteration for words and so they took it to the extreme that they could within the confines of what they were writing. They exploited the treaty. The, uh, the Maori text of Article 2 uses the word rangatiratanga. The Maori text of Article 2 uses the word rangatiratanga in promising to uphold the authority that, tri that tribes had always had over their lands and Daonga Daonga this choice of wording emphasizes uh, the choice of wording emphasizes status and authority in the English text the queen guaranteed to Maori the undisturbed possessions of their properties including their lands forests and fisheries for as long as they wish to retain them the text emphasizes property and ownership rights in the Maori text, the chiefs agreed to sell the land to the, cre to the queen at agreed prices. By contrast, in the English text, this was called the exclusive right of preemption, which meant only the crown could purchase land from Maori. Only the crown, okay. Scholars in the tribunal have concluded Maori and the crown held different interpretations of this provision. Well, that's obvious now. Dang. Bruh. They. Oh, they so slick. In Article 3 of the English text, the crown promises to Maori the benefits of royal protection and full citizenship. In the Maori text, the queen agrees to give Maori the same rights and duties of citizenship as the people of England. The 
this article emphasizes equality and equity. The epilogue of the Maori text notes the chiefs had seen and accepted the words and agreed to record their names and tohu or marks. This rendered in the English text as signatories having entered into the full spirit and meaning of the treaty. Further information about texts of the treaty can be found in the chapter De Tiriti and the Treaty. Each tribunal panel is constituted to determine the meaning and effect of the treaty based on the claims before it. Readers interested in the tribunal's interpretation of the treaty and its principles are directed to the tribunal's report themselves. The question of depopulation? Okay, interesting. The Maori text is not an exact translation of the English text, particularly in relation to the meaning of having and ceding sovereignty. Bruh, a technicality. That's disgusting. They took full advantage. These differences created disagreements in the decades following the signing, eventually contributing to the New Zealand Wars of 1845 to 1872 and continuing to the Treaty of Waitangi Settlement starting in the early 1990s. The Treaty of Waitangi Settlements claims and, claims and settlements under the Treaty of Waitangi have been a significant feature of New Zealand politics since We don't be careful and by we I mean people that are trying to keep others down there is going to be a repeat and it's <laughs> oh boy there's going to be a repeat during the second half of the 19th century Maori generally lost control of much of the land they had owned sometimes through legitimate sale but often by way of unfair deals, settlers occupying lands that had not been sold or through outright confiscations in the aftermath of the New Zealand Wars. In the period following the New Zealand Wars, the New Zealand government mostly ignored the treaty and the court judgment in 1877 declared it to be a simple nullity. No, they did not. Beginning in the 1950s, Maori increasingly sought to use the treaty as a platform for claiming additional rights to sovereignty and to reclaim lost land, and governments in the 1960s and 70s responded to these arguments, giving the treaty an increasingly central role in the interpretation of right, land rights and relations between Maori people and the state, because they know that they had the upper hand. In 75, the New Zealand Parliament passed the Treaty of Waitangi Act, establishing the Waitangi Tribunal as a permanent commission of inquiry tasked with interpreting the treaty, investigating breaches of the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi by the Crown or its agents, and suggesting means of redress. It's about time. In most cases, recommendations of the tribunal are not binding on the Crown. Of course not. Why would they write that in there? But settlements with a total value of roughly $1 billion dollars have been awarded to various Maori groups that don't begin to cover it bruh bruh that don't even begin to 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 that no no not good enough give us our land I don't want your money give me my land various legislation passed in the latter part of the 20th century has made reference to the treaty which has led to an ad hoc incorporation of the treaty into law what is this wow. 
when necessary or needed. Oh, off the cuff. Improvise, which has led to improvising incorporation of the treaty into law. Various legislation passed in the latter part of the 20th century has made reference to the treaty, which has led to randomly using the treaty of, into law. Increasingly, the treaty is recognized as founding as the founding document in New Zealand's developing unwritten constitution. The New Zealand Day Act in 1973 establishes Waitangi Day as a national holiday to commemorate the signing of the treaty. Why would I want to celebrate the day that I got lied to? Why would I want to celebrate that? The entire treaty was prepared in three days, in which it underwent many revisions. There were doubts even during the drafting process that the Maori chiefs would be able to understand the concept of relinquishing sovereignty. And they assumed that they wouldn't and went forward with it anyway because it served their purpose of taking over and colonizing the world. Assuming that a treaty in English could not be understood, debated, or agreed to by, by Maori, Hobson asked Henry Williams and his son, Edward Williams, who was a scholar in Maori language and custom, to translate the document overnight on February 4th. Henry Williams was concerned with the actions of the New Zealand Company in Wellington and felt he had to agree with Hobson's request to ensure the treaty would be as favorable as possible to Maori. Well, given what it is now, I'm afraid to see how much worse it could have been. Williams avoided using any English words that had no expression in Maori, thereby preserving entire the spirit and tenor of the treaty. He added a note to the copy Hobson sent Gibbs stating, I certify that the above is as literal a translation of the Treaty of Waitangi as the idiom of the language will allow. The gospel-based literacy of Maori meant some of the concepts communicated in translation were from the Maori Bible, including Kawanatanga, governorship, and Rangatiratanga, chiefly rule and the idea of the treaty as a covenant was biblical. All right, let's finish the video now that I got a little bit of background. To give everyone e equality. Do you think the effects of colonization still affect Maori today? Absolutely. My honest opinion, the Maori would be extinct if the Europeans did not come out when they did. They'd run out of the uh, mower. We don't see people with colour. We just yeah. see person as a person. We just judge everybody as who they are, not mm. what colour their skin is. Yeah. That's part of who they are. It's what do you think will happen on Tuesday at Waitangi Day? Throw shit at Prime Ministers or <laughs> dildos. Do you think they shouldn't be protesting? No. No, it should be, like I said, it should be New Zealand Day. Everyone should celebrate it as New Zealand Day. This is a medal. We're getting closer to my TV. Call our people and find out who we are. We are a lot that don't know, don't know how our roots are and stuff. Here, you know. What is Waitangi Day to you? I don't know shoving it to the crown, I suppose. Do you think there is disrespect going on? Um, I think that's an understatement, my bro. I don't really know because I don't really watch that, eh? But just what I hear, mm, Maori all the, all the way. <laughs> yeah, Maori all the What's your staff that you're holding? You see, his name's Tamanui Tira. He started shaking out of nowhere. And I thought there was a manu or 
um, cuddly here and there, or animal, but um, turns out that it was just him shaking his, his head. Mm. What's the haka you were just doing? Uh, toi ia mai, and it's uh, bringing in the waka, bringing in our people. What kind of future do you want for your son? A future where he is able to be expressive about being Māori, about being Pākehā. We've lost all of our land. We own 100% of Aotearoa, New Zealand. What is there your... are people in control, but you have to learn that yourself. Who the in the article, in the article, and the, the the husband and wife said something that made me think about reading this, which is the fact that the chief at the time was concerned about being overtaken, or at least that's what they're they're saying in this document. The chief said, "Governor, you should stay with us and be like a father." If you go away, then the French or the rum sellers will take us Maori over. How can we know what the future will bring? If you stay, we can be all as one with you and the missionaries. And then, oh, it was told by this person. Some of you tell Hobson to go, but that's not going to solve our difficulties. We have already sold so much land here in the north. We have no way of controlling the Europeans who have settled on it. I'm amazed to hear you telling him to go. Why didn't you tell the traders and grog settlers to go years ago? There are too many Europeans here now, and there are children that unite our races. Oh, Bishop Pompelier, Pompeier, probably, maybe, I don't know, who had been counseling the many Catholic Maori in the north concerning the treaty urged them to be very wary of the treaty and not to sign anything. Oh, man. Oh, man. There was a warning. Sheesh. But I guess there was so much going on that they just wanted to protect the people, I suppose, man. I don't... In control, but you have to learn that yourself who these people are. What were you going to say about Winston Peters? Oh, it's a whole lot of cuck on me. You met the Prime Minister? Yeah, he was here today. He was here the other day too. What do you think of him? I'm just no comment. Can you tell me about your why is it on our fishing? That said so much, love says so much we got you loud and clear yeah. the reason why it's on a fishing rod is can you tell me about your why is it on a fishing pole here the reason why it's on a fishing rod is because this has it. got something to do with the, um, our survival we kind of brought all our tools with us what are you working on here uh just a painting in plain air and it's just a separation of the the crowd looking at the priest at the marae what is it like growing up in aotearoa oh it's good bro Kora, who are you? Kora. Oh, I'm Rory, Rory Hemi. What do you stand for? I stand for Māori. I stand for our people, our family. How have Māori struggled in Aotearoa? Oh, don't you know? <laughs> in every facet of life. As a fair Māori, I hear, I didn't hear the question. Our family. How have Māori struggled in Aotearoa? Oh, man. Oh, don't you know? <laughs> in every facet of life. As a fair Māori, I hear racism every day of the year. People say things in front of me they would never say in front of uh, brown-faced people. Just um, not treated how you treat your dog, if you know what I mean. If you had a dog, you'd look after your dog, you'd feed it, you'd care for it, you'd look after it, you'd shelter it. And not being recognised is even a real kick in the belly that we are... That's, that's how I've been feeling 
until I met the Maori people. This was, or well, still is, our land. What's happening just over here? Well, they're getting ready for the, the 21 gun salute. There's a ship out there ready for the 21 gun salute. Sunny weather, and when you see all these sailboats out there, New Zealand, Aperoa. <laughs> How has being Maori changed over your lifetime in Aotearoa? Losing my deal, losing <laughs> my language by going into schools, just being English, really. I used to think Maori. Speak. Tereo Māori at home, keep the language alive. Hide it until there comes a moment in time when you no longer have to hide. This is a time of biding your time. This is a time of gathering strength so that when the opportunity presents itself, we make things how they really supposed to be. And we right the wrongs that have been placed upon us by decisions made before us. There will be a time. The time is, the time is coming. Bide your time. Grow. Grow in the knowledge of who you are. Grow in your language. Grow, grow, and continue to grow right up under their nose until it is time. What a glorious day it shall be. The F is that going to do for me? You know, English, really? I used to think, Māori, what the F is that going to do for me? You know, but then once I started touching back to my whakapapa and my roots, you know, I was, I was lost as of now. I'm, I know who I am. I know where I come from and I know where I'm heading. Mr. Grandma. Right, it gives you a certain power unattainable by not knowing who you are. It's almost intangible in the way that it affects an individual, but it is so tangible in the way in what it does for them flags. They're sitting here, look how beautiful they are. I'm part of the grandmothers of Waitaha. We're here for our whenua, for our tamariki mokopuna, who's going to be the next generation coming, that they don't forget what we are standing for. We are just sitting and waiting and just listening. What are you waiting for? Waiting for the results that what may become for our people. We've seen some people doing manus over the wharf, so we're gonna go see what's happening. We're doing manus, pretty big ones, you know. <laughs> do you want to show us some manu? Oh, oh I know, I can do it. Let's do it. You do it. Come on, Mario, you got this. Let's go. There we go. How was that? Out of ten. A ten out of ten. Beautiful. Oh. Who's the best here? A manu is a dive. Yeah. Do you want to show us your manu? Yeah. So a manu is a dive. Watch out. Oh, can I watch it? How's that? Is is the US version of this a cannonball? Is that what a manu is? A cannonball? Because that's what it looks like. How's your manu? Oh, big. Ready? Yo. Get wet. It's all, all in the form. Bring your knees in and pray for the best. <laughs> not see to the right nut. I don't know. They trust the guy in the middle, he's a dick. Oh, just too amateur. Get it. He's just too amateur. <laughs> that was a funny joke. Your knees in and pray for the best. Here we the go. left nut, see to the right nut. I don't know. They trust the guy in the middle, he's a dick. <laughs> what the left what the left nut say to the right nut? Don't trust the guy in the middle, he's a dick. <laughs> 
Just too amateur. I didn't get it. He's just too amateur. Hold up, I'll see. Can you show us a bomb? Me? Let's go, sir. Do you have a lead? You go like that when you jump off. How much? I got a. I'll give you a hundred bucks. I'm gonna tell him my bag. Where's this guy? What? I really appreciate. I really appreciate the Department of Information. Whoever this this team was right here going out and doing this, this was dope to see. Let's see, Department of Information. What other videos they got? Yeah, I know. Let's see, the city run by students, Dunedin, New Zealand. Okay, so this is nice. I'm subscribing. I'm subscribing because they have New Zealand information that I would like to know. All right, cool little frozen beans, man. In this video, I covered a couple different things. I got deeper into my knowledge of the Maori and the Treaty of Waitangi, and I found out some very surprising and very hurtful things, some things that I never knew, and it really just, illuminated the struggle of the Maori people to me and it proves to me that I actually might be here for a reason to to at least the very least spread awareness so that you can have some type of support even if it just be being in our thoughts and prayers that matters and I don't know I just feel drawn to the Maori people for some reason I can't really think I can't understand I don't understand it but it's definitely got to do with seeing how down downtrodden they are how they were pretty much bullied by the the British government and I am not someone who stands around and lets people be bullied I am a bullier of bullies people point and tell me who's bothering them and I go handle that. There's only so much I can do in this particular scenario, but I'm doing all that I can with the knowledge that I have and with the means that I have and any inkling I can find to do more, I will. I despise people being walked over and erased and put up under somebody's thumb. I can't stand it. So, I found a cause that I want to fight for. And there is more than one for me. The main one is spreading the gospel and telling people about pretty much the ultimate future. But this, this is important to me. This is important to me. All right, man. If you learned something that you didn't know before, tell me what it is in the comment section. Like the video so that other Maoris can be aware. The ones that aren't aware that they, that they can be aware. Share the video. Like, comment, share. Subscribe to the channel for more reactions from me. And consider becoming a member because that's how I'll come visit Aotearoa, Hawaii, go see Stan Walker, EM, and whoever else wants to see this guy here. Mm. I appreciate you being here with me in this video. Thank you so much. I love you, and I'll see you in the next one. Love.